everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I thought it'd be fun to do a, another one of these palette challenges, seasonal palette challenges, and this time we'll be doing the spring palette. And as you can see here, I've already chosen my colours and if you haven't seen this video before, if you haven't seen my winter uh, tarot style piece that I did, I do recommend that you check that out. That was a really fun piece to actually work on. And since we are going for seasonal tieflings, I thought what better way than to continue this tarot style series than uh, doing a spring one. So it is coming up to spring. We are literally about a week away here in the UK from spring being official. All the flowers are coming up and I am feeling so motivated and so drawn to a lot of things at the moment. And I sort of wanted to bring all those emotions in with this piece. Now for this tiefling in particular, now if you don't know what a tiefling is, a tiefling is a race of characters that you can play in a game called Dungeons and dragons. They typically are horned humanoids with either, uh, they can either have like big tails, they can have cloven hoof feet. Um, there's lots of different variations that you can have with tieflings and this is why I've kind of wanted to do this as a series because I think it's really fun to start, sort of do and have representations of that. And since we are going for spring, I really wanted to do something that was inspired by lambs and sheep and rams and figured that would be perfect for a tiefling because then we can have those beautiful curly horns and of course to be inspired by like the sort of motion of like jumping and movement. So that's kind of what I was vibe I was going for with this piece uh, with the winter one she's very graceful she looks like she's dancing in like a half dancing pose whereas this one I wanted to, to feel a lot of joy a lot of movement overall in this piece so that's what I was aiming for um I had an awful lot of fun with this. The thing that was possibly the hardest was when it came to colouring. Now we're going to touch on the colouring in a sec, but let me talk about the dynamics of the piece overall. So we're going for like a sort of leaping motion. I really wanted that fun line of action where we follow the leg, have the tail all moving in that direction. The petal like dress sort of like flowing in that sort of sense of like she's just jumped up and this mass of curly hair. I love over the the top hair and I thought this was perfect it was very reminiscent of like sheep's wool so uh, in order to keep the lines quite soft and yet go for a very warm appearance we're using the sepia uni pin fine liner now the sepia uni pin fine liner um, they do a few colored pens in the uni pin fine liner range uh, but this is really good if you want that soft look without it being too harsh with black lines sometimes I find that black lines can be a little bit too harsh so I sometimes either like to use dip pen or I would like to try and use a coloured fine liner. Um, with a spring palette we are thinking of pastel tones but with a slightly warmer hue. Um, when you think of spring you immediately think of Easter palette, you think of greens, yellows, uh, oranges, blues, like um, when I think of greens, uh, when I think of spring I think of greens when I think of greens I think of greens <laughs> beautiful that's why my brain works today um and I really wanted that feeling of fresh colors so I didn't want to use anything that was too harsh with the greens I tried to keep it to a lot of softer ranges and when it came to the other colors um i wanted to use oranges now oranges n most people don't tend to associate with spring i tend to, to associate spring with lots of yellows and oranges because we have a lot of daffodils here in the uk which are these beautiful yellow and orange flowers um we also get a lot of crocuses lily of the valley um there are lots of flowers that tend to pop up around the spring and i always find myself like really really inspired by these um tulips tend to come around i mean tulips tend to be around from uh spring and so, uh, summer anyway but um it's all about stuff growing and becoming nature and nature is bringing itself back out of the cold and the birds are singing and all of that there was a few options i actually did have for this i originally was going to keep with just a very 
uh, muted pastel palette um, as well as um, originally was going to give her very long sleek hair or like short curly hair um, and I was going to have birds flying with her to keep within that line of motion. I also had a really big struggle with her hands. I originally was going to have her hands like up as if she was leaping forward but I decided to have them go back and this is because with the line of action that we're going for it looked better if the arms were behind her than if they were in front of her if you're going in front you want the curve of the back to be going more towards the back so like this line of action she is mo jumping forward so because she, she's jumping forward with like her leaping motion her back is arched forwards whereas if she is leaping forward as in um uh, she's got her knees in front of her like the backward arch back it's a bit difficult to explain without actually physically showing you but there is a few ways that you could really effectively do a jumping motion now i like to think of like this is sort of where she's just like sort of like jumped over something and she is landing so we've got this really beautiful like uh curved line Line of actions are super important to be able to create movement and dynamic posing and it's able to really help your character create a lot of movement without doing too much. Like for example, the tail follows the same line of action, the arms follow that same line of action so we have that leaping motion. I did go through a lot of poses to try and create that sort of like lamb-like leap I was after. I'm pretty happy with this there's a few things i definitely would change but is i'm like that with every piece i do i mean who doesn't look at a piece of art after they've done and gone hey i could change a few things about this but overall i think it's fairly successful i really love the skin tone here this sort of pale yellow with this sort of greenish hue i thought this was really fresh looking and then adding a little bit of warmth by adding peach on top was able to get that desired skin tone effect i was going for now originally i was going to go for a green skin tone and a green skin tone to match spring and um, because there's a lot of like like i said you the grass comes out from the snow the leaves are budding in the trees and i was trying to use a lot of inspiration points uh, amalgamated into one idea and overall I think she's fairly successful um there's a few things that I would like I said I would change um I really like how her bodice is and her arms and those legs they're colored really nicely but I think maybe I went a bit too warm with the hair tone but I didn't know what else I could have done with the hair tone apart from making it another yellow. I feel like with a summer palette especially, we are looking at a lot warmer tones. So I tried to stick to, if I was using an orange, it was going to be a very peachy orange to keep to that pastel tone that we're after for spring. Uh, I did warm it up in the end, actually, when I was doing shading. Um... I used a little bit of purple for shading as well to try and keep to that cooler warm tone rather than warm warm tone and that's to do with like the base color that you are using so if you go for a cooler blue uh, sorry a cooler purple that ha tends to have a blue base where if you're going for a warmer purple that tends to have a bit more of a red pinky base um and i was trying to keep these colors very fresh um, I think I succeeded. I don't know. You'll have to let me know. I really like this sort of series. This is really, really fun to do. It makes me think about like how can I like tweak these designs so that they are slightly different and really incorporate like all the inspirations that I'm looking at overall to make sure that these designs are the way I want them. The thing that's the least successful in this is the flowers in the hair. I think the way I should have done it is I should have just done the hair first completely and then gone over with the um with the acrylic markers to get the flowers that i wanted because i could have just gone all out with the hair and created like this curly mass of hair and then put the flowers on top in fact we could probably have paper crafted the flowers and put them on top of the hair and that would have been a bit more effective um i feel like out of the entire illustration they are the weakest part here um for sure 100 percent for sure um and like 
there's something about I wish that there were certain tones that I could have looked back on and changed like this hair is absolutely lovely I love how pastel it is and I ended up warming it up quite a bit um, because spring does have a lot of colours it just genuinely has an awful lot of colours altogether. Um, you know, you've got your carnations that are growing out as well and the, the flowers tend to have a big colour range. Um, with summer palettes, I tend to think of like warmer tones. I tend to think of like yellows and oranges. Um, I tend to think of reds. I tend to think of like the more fiery palettes than I do for spring, where spring is very more muted and pastel toned. But I digress. I think if it, this hair was like green, it would probably look like broccoli. Or if I chose yellow, I think yellow would have blended too much in with the skin. So I would have had to change the skin tone. And when we could have had the skin green, so then it blends in with all the leaves. But is that too much green? Like, there's lots of things that you can do to look at an illustration and change it. I think the orange is fairly successful it could just be tweaked i don't know maybe i'm harping on this too much you'll have to let me know in the comments section down below if you could change this illustration what would you do so after done with all my markers i'm sort of going over with colored pencils to sort of deepen certain shadows and using my acrylic pens to sort of lighten up areas where i maybe went a little bit too dark overall i really did enjoy this these are an awful lot of fun like i said i love drawing tieflings they're one of my favorite style characters to draw satyrs tieflings fantasy style creatures give them to me i love drawing them um it's just was an awful lot of fun if you ever are interested in dungeons and dragons or are a player of dungeons and dragons i do have quite a bit of content on this channel which talks about dungeons and dragons games that i've been a part of and characters that i've created i really actually i'm excited because i did introduce my new DD character that i finally got to, i am actually playing in a game now um I introduced a new Dungeons and Dragons character in a stream and in that stream I got explained a little bit more about that character but if people would like to know more about my beautiful tiefling Isabella Amora Darlington let me know. I'm always interested in feedback and I'm always interested in creating more content. I've got the content bug right now. I just, I'm in the mood to create and it's always a little bit fun. Um, if you're wondering about streams, I do try and stream every single Sunday. Um, I try and stream as often as I can here up on the YouTube channel. We have a lot of fun. Sometimes we always draw together, have a laugh. Nine times out of ten we end up talking about food. Um, but it's always a bit of a laugh and we do have some fun on there. I know for this week we're going to have a Pokemon drawing challenge which is going to be interesting. Which I will actually do a video on that as well because that's always fun. Um... Drawing challenges are just fun. They're really good ways of like branching out and trying out new skills. I'm currently actually filling out a sketchbook with a drawing challenge that I set for myself and I am using loads of new equipment I have never used before and it is very nerve-wracking, I will tell you that. But I am having fun and that is the main thing. I'm forever working on projects. I'm forever working on things. And this was just a bit of fun. So here we have the spring palette challenge and this is what I did. I really like her. She looks really fun, really joyful and it's actually really interesting to see her in contrast with winter. Winter looks so calm and serene and spring just looks like a really good time. Like they would be the type that would be like over joyous and bubbly and always happy. Maybe even give you a cookie or two. I don't know. I love this character design, she's super fun. But I hope you all have a wonderful day and have enjoyed the video. Let me know if you would like to see the summer palette. That will, of course, come out during the summertime. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Love what you do, keep drawing. And as always, folks, stay creative.